Welcome everybody to my Orzhov Knights deck profile for the standard Guilds of Ravnica series. Let's go right into the deck. First up is the one drop of the deck, Dauntless Bodyguard. He's a one drop 2-1 that can make another creature indestructible. And of course you're going to choose him when he drops out. But for a one drop 2-1 that's pretty amazing, especially since he's a knight. Moving on to Knight of Malice and Knight of Grace. Both have first strike and they have hexproof from the opposite collar and they get a bump by the opposite color, which is pretty easy to do in this deck since there's plenty of black and white creatures. And, and they're just brutal with that first strike. Take out most creatures in the format, uh, especially with that first strike. A lot of the token build, a lot of token decks, you know, they're going to be hesitant to swing at you when you got these on the field. Uh, next up is Ben Last Marshall. He bumps up all the other creatures, so that first strike becomes even more deadly. And you're going to do a lot more damage and take out any mid-range threat. Up next is Midnight Reaper. He's a zombie knight. Which is amazing, and uh, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, he does one damage to you and you draw a card. Now that one damage, of course, it can add up if, you know, bad situations. But him being a 3-2, and it allows you to draw when one dies, so you can replace replace one of the creatures or hit a removal package that you need. He's really, he's really amazing. All the testing, he's been really good. Yeah, uh, Mono Red's a problem, but there's a lot of ways in black, black and white that you can deal with Mono Red. That's where your side deck is really going to come and play. It just depends on your locals and or if, what you're going to go play in. Uh, moving next, of course, is History of Analia. It's the main win con of the deck. Not only does it create you two knights, but it also bumps up every single one of your knights, which the entire deck is all knights. So basically, when you drop off on the turn three uh, history and then turn six, knocking off... History when it falls off, giving the knights the 2-1 boost. You're probably going to have a field full of creatures. Uh, especially turn 1, you're going to Dauntless. Turn 2, Knight. Uh, turn 3, History. Turn 4, drop out Ben Lash, Midnight, or Valiant. Turn 4 would be a great Valiant Knight play. Uh, then turn 5, dropping down any of the uh, rest. And turn 6, this goes off. And then if turn six you drop down another Valiant Knight or Ben Last Marshal, they're going to be even bigger. It's just it's completely de deadly. It's very oppressive. It's very overpowering, especially for the format. It's been able to take down Selznia, Demir, and Mono Red in all my playthroughs. Also, Grixis Control it does really good against Grixis Control, especially with the Dauntless Bodyguards. In this in the side deck, you can run Liars, Shalais, you know, any uh, more removal package, more protection package, life gain package, anything you need in the side. Uh, moving on down, we're running Cast Out and Seal Aways in the main. Uh, cast Out, you know, just destroy a non-target, non-legendary. There's a lot of legendaries in the format, but we also got Seal Away and Conclave for that. Uh, running Seal Away as, you know, instant speed, you know, removal. And especially against aggro, you could trade this out for, you know, sell the wreckage. If you're playing against creature decks, you know. There's a lot of things we could put into our side deck to stop that. It all depends on your locals. Uh, moving down, of course, to Conclave to Tribunal. One of my favorite new room, new enchantments. I love using it in my Selznia tokens. And this one is still works because you can still make it go down to one, especially if you fill four creatures. And it's just a really amazing enchantment. For the land, it's just basic, you know, isolated chapels, two forsaken sanctuary, and then plays as well. I, I, don't, I ain't running four because I don't like them coming in tapped. It's just really slow, especially when you got token builds and mono red afoot. But two is really good, you know, to sort out the double black, double white. You know, to make sure you have your callers. Uh, when sh the new shock lands come out next set, of course, Forsaken Sanctuaries are going to be replaced, and this deck's going to be even better, especially if there's any more knights coming out. There, there was—I don't think there was too many knights coming out in this that came out in this set. Mostly soldiers, but I mean, we already have, as you see, package. I was going to turn this into Abazan Knights, and a friend of mine is actually running Abazan Knights, and it has, has a great removal package. Because of Assassin's Trophy and, and other cards like that. But I honestly think the Orzhov Knights is way more oppressive. Way more powerful because of the aggro stance. Especially since mostly it's mostly aggro currently. And um, it, it's just very dominant. It's just very oppressive. It, it beats my Selesnia tokens. You know, you know it, like 70% of the time. It beats Mono Red roughly 70% of the time. Uh, only time Mono Red really gets over... Orzov is just because of the burn package, you know, if they get too, too damaging way too much early and you're not able to, you know, kill them quick enough, uh, burn can just knock you out, especially with Experimental Frenzy, which I will be also bringing my Mono Red build also into a video here soon. 
As always, this is Shadow Child from AKU Clan. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll be bringing more to you guys soon. See you guys later.